Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I'm doing another movie review this week, which, interesting enough, it's another Disney film. But it's a sports family comedy that features WWE wrestler Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, in his first family film. And that is, of course, The Game Plan, which I just got on Blu-ray at Goodwill for only a lot less because it's part of the green tax sale yeah it blocks it around right here it's one of the original blu-ray releases uh, from Disney that came out in 2008 anyway it's a story about a highly successful quarterback football player who gets his small surprise from a previous relationship an eight-year-old smart aleck daughter <laughs> yeah. And this does have features included. I mean, you even got the ESPN Sports Center uh, featurettes, plus uh, deleted scenes, uh, bloopers with Mark Albert. Um, even has a commentary with the walk, you know, the chalk talk, and even and all these uh, interactive uh, games. Uh, to be included, I mean, of course, because like all family films that's on Blu-ray and DVD, they're always going to include that. That's always the case. I mean, I know there's a combo pack uh, with the DVD, but this one, of course, has a much shinier <laughs> cover right here, which I know you you have The Rock as the football player. You have uh, his dog, the bulldog, his pet. And, of course, has the daughter dressed up um, as a ballet dancer and all. You can probably tell how shiny the cover really looks. I mean, if you have the this particular Blu-ray. Um, yeah, it does come with a code for Disney Movie Rewards, which is now Disney Movie Insiders. Uh, I just used it already. <laughs> and just... Um, an advertisement for Monster Cable, those HDMI cables, which were very expensive at the time. I mean, but nowadays you can get it for a lot cheaper. And just um, another, you know, Disney Blu-ray disc uh, flyers for many of the Disney tales that were released on Blu-ray. So you pretty much get the idea. It has uh, these titles. Okay, and of course you get the the disc right here with artwork, and has the scene selections on the side and underneath the the particular disc you just get like uh, if I can take this off. Um, so I don't mess this up. You just get the Rock and Madison Paytas. <laughs> Which is basically the, um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's in good shape. I mean, seeing that it's used from Goodwill. Uh, but I did clean it. Okay, just want to put everything away as safely as sound. So everything can get perfectly. Anyway, um... So, I would say that this was a, a remarkable surprise for me. Because I only saw like bits and pieces. Um, I did recall like a long time ago, because I know I've seen trailers, TV spots and all. Um, I think my brother Jason have seen this movie in, as an early screening. Uh, he was telling me about this movie and... I figured this might be the one that he was talking about where, you know, it definitely had its um, heart in its right place. You know, it's very funny, but there's a lot of dramatic moments in there. So that's what I was expecting. Um, well, seeing that this is the first time I saw the entire movie with the special features included, I had to say, um, this was... Um, as remarkable as I expected it. I just thought this was going to be yet another silly 
stupid. Yeah, stupid is a mean word. <laughs> as as uh, crowed in the movie. <laughs> yeah, just probably another lousy, run-of-the-mill Disney film as as even the critics have quoted. But you know what? As far as I'm concerned, I would rather watch this than his lousy Jermanji sequels that he did. Yeah, the ones that get critically praised. <laughs> but luckily, you know, there are smart critics out there who agree this movie is actually better. Because uh, it does have a lot of charm and heart. Yeah, it's heartwarming. You get to see the presence of The Rock with his um, very likability, charisma. Yeah, he's, he's very sexy, charming, wonderful. He's very funny too, surprisingly enough. Um, Madison Pettis, <clears throat> sorry, Madison Pettis is basically smart. Yeah, she could be spoiled, bratty and all, but <laughs> all wise, I, I think she was great. But hey, it could have been worse. <laughs> but I'm glad it wasn't. So this was definitely worth the purchase for this Blu-ray long. And uh, I think it joins in with Journey 2 that he did. So I guess it really shows that yeah, he can be a, a very uh, powerful actor. I mean, it's funny because he actually did do a football drama before this called The Grey Iron Game, uh, which uh, Phil Jonah who directed. Um, but it got mixed reviews, just like the game plan did. And I think that's why he deserved better. <laughs> but, you know, I think The Rock's earlier films, to me, were a lot better than any of his later films. Well, except for Central Intelligence. And, uh... And, once again, Journey 2. And maybe some other films that he's done that were better. So, you never know. Um, but has a nice cast to join in. Um, actually, they were they were excellent. Um, there's even a lot of memorable quotes to follow. I'm surprised that I even saw that. And there's some nice, um, incredible scenes in the movie that I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I mean, for this particular running time too. And then I learned about that seeing that The Rock. Um, played a football player and the fact that he was he did a lot of practice you know trying to you know make it big and all and trying to help out with all the other football teams you know even if he had made his mistakes um, he did his own stunts actually and what's amazing though was that um, he got injured he fractured his leg uh, while on set and because they were afraid that because he ends up in the hospital for only a month just so he can recover uh, they were going to shut down the production throughout the film and yeah that was going to be a big problem so they weren't so sure how this was going to work out so they had to wait a month and maybe they were hoping that they'll be able to continue the film the rest of the movie before it finally ends um, so yeah I saw this on the special features so it explains it here. So, wow. And there's a lot of cameos in this movie, all of which were from ESPN Sports Center. Yeah, ESPN's part of ABC and Disney. So you're going to be able to see all these recognizable reporters, and you see some of these sports uh, commenters, and, and even, um, I think, all these other... Um, Football Hall of Fames receivers and all. I mean, you're probably going to see a lot of football players, too, that you're familiar with. So it's basically what we expected. I mean, sure, it's it's no um, Remember the Titans when it comes to football drama with comedy elements blending in. And, and it's sure no Miracle nor Glory Road, but I think it really handles it pretty well for a Disney movie. And seeing that this was the the last movie to feature the the of course the Brenda Vista Pictures uh, distribution because it eventually was going to be changed to Walt 
Disney Studios motion pictures. And also because I think this was the last movie where it was going to be credited as Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah. So he wants to be referred to as Dwayne Johnson. But people still remember him as The Rock you know, from the WWE. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let's get right to this review. It stars Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock. I'm going to keep it that way. Madison Pettis, or Pettis, I'm sorry, <laughs> I messed up their name. Uh, Rosaline Sanchez, uh, you may remember her from that TV show called Without a Trace, but I think she was also in the um, Fame LA, uh, among others. I mean, she's a dancer herself, too. Kira Cedric. Uh, I know she was in the movie Hearts and Souls uh, with Robert Downey Jr. and been in many other films. But she was also in the crime drama from TNT called The Closer. Yeah, The Closer. <laughs> and she's a great actress. Um, Morris Chestnut has been memorable from his role in Boys in the Hood. And he has done some film and television you know, series and all. Um, Paige Tuco, who of course was uh, the replacement of April O'Neil in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sequels. Yeah, the second and third. Um, but she's also had been in other stuff too. Like she was in the soap opera called All My Children. That was on ABC. Uh, Hayes uh, McArthur, uh, who went on to do the comedy series on TBS called Angie Tribeca. Um, yeah, he's a stand-up comedian. Brian G. Wright, uh, Brian J. Wright, who went on to do uh, films like The Family Stone, um, Good Deeds, uh, The Cabin in the Woods from 2012, uh, among others. Um, Jamal Duff, um, yeah, of course, who's a football player and a form. So at least now we know that we got a, a real life football player to be in this movie. Lawrence Storm from that terrible movie I Love You Bit Cooper. Uh, Gordon Clapp from NYPD Blue. Kate Nalta. Robert Torrey and Elizabeth Ch Chambers, uh, but they also have um, reporters from ESPN Sports Center, uh, such as Marf Albert, Boomer Alassian, and even uh, Steve Levy. <laughs> it's written by Nicole uh, Millard, along with Catherine Price and Audrey uh, Wells, based upon their story. And it's directed by Andy Fickman, who uh, had, of course, been known for directing this, uh, um, hard to believe, but he actually directed um, the Reefer Madness uh, musical, among other stuff. <laughs> so, this is interesting. The movie began set during its regular season of the American Football Federation on its last game between the Boston Rebels and the New York Dukes. We meet the uh, highly successful quarterback of the football team, Joe Keenman, who's played by Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, who scores a touchdown, even after ignoring his open right receiver, Travis Saunders, and his best friend, played by Morris Chestnut. So, of course, they celebrated a victory party at his uh, high-rise apartment building, which was filled with football and since he's an Elvis fan, his memorabilia, um, which includes, you know, the the guitar, and even the the movie poster of King Chris Roll, all of that. <laughs> so he's just spending time with the rest of his best friends. Uh, that also includes uh, Cal Cooper, played by Hayes McArthur, who always keeps pulling some pranks on everyone, but the jokes on him when. <laughs> he ends up um, getting all all these pranks from himself, you know, like when he was using the the breath sprayer and 
he sprays all around his breath, but it turns out all this green is inside his teeth. And then there's even another scene where um, he was about to give uh, one of his friends uh, a soda, but then he he actually switched the cans, and now he gets all you know soda spray all around him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, so of course, you know, a lot of dancing, a lot of music, you know, watching some games and all on the TV set, even watching ESPN Sports Center, you know, just to watch his interview. Also, uh, sending out the ladies, because, you know, he's very nice and likable. Some Gucci's gifts that's inside his closet. <laughs> It's all purses. I mean, even if you try to remember their names and all. <laughs> try to agree with them, with his charms. Uh, so they had a great time. Um, but then the next morning, um, he began to receive a very small surprise when he found out that an eight-year-old girl named Peyton Kelly, played by Madison Peters, had arrived on his doorstep that he might be his biological daughter of his divorced wife Sarah which it actually had been sent there to meet him we also learned that Joe actually has a publicity agent named Stella Peck played by Kira Cedric who actually thinks that this will be it might destroy his entire image and they'll distract him for all the upcoming playoffs yeah, of course, especially since she pretty much, you know, tries to do her best to not to not get into bigger trouble, you know, between his particular relationship here. Especially after he opens his own restaurant and nightclub and bar, Joe um, accidentally left without uh, Peyton, which he wants up on the cover of a tabloid magazine where he ex where he basically just socks a, a paparazzi but Stella decides that Joe needs a new fatherly image so later on the press conference so the reporters made Joe miserable but Peyton came to the rescue to, through his defense that he is very new to this idea and that he was trying the best he can to to become the best fodder in the world um, I know uh, even during the practice, though, well, we also learned that Joe actually has, well, there, there is, of course, his, his own uh, image, too, where his own quote, uh, never say no, but also because he, he does develop a cinnamon allergy, and that's where it caused him to have a raspy bite, like he's talking like the best of the cat. Or Daffy Duck, for that matter. <laughs> I'm the th 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 so I mean, that really affected him so badly. I mean, even for his particular performance by trying to help out the team out. Um, so to repay her, Joe decided to take Peyton to a local ballet academy, and that's where we meet the uh, ballet instructor. Monique Balquez is played by Rosalind Sanchez and that's where they begin their relationship with each other even after Peyton calls him a selfish and arrogant you know through his entire behavior well of course I mean that's part of that also trying to criticize you know ballet as not being a sport you know kind of like how you criticize cheerleading and gymnastics and all but at that point on <laughs> that's when uh, Joe takes Peyton t with her new friends to the mall where he begins to develop a romantic feelings for Monique and then this is where now he ends up uh, doing a lot of practice uh, showing all the ballet uh, moves and dances and all you know showing that it's actually more athletic as football of course because you know he's very good on, on the games too you know winning several points i mean even if he has you know lost i mean still he he never gives up you know 
So, of course, um, with um, the $25 million endorsement deal with Fanny Burgers, which is a successful fast food uh, restaurant joint, um, the Rebels had to march through all the playoffs uh, between the Denver's, the Indianapolis, and the Baltimore's, all their rounds. So then, this was going to be the biggest victory that it'll have. And, of course, already with the... The ballet recital that was going on. I mean, apparently he was embarrassed at first, but because he had to wear this big or small you know, tights, but he realized that you know, no matter what happens, you know, they're going to end up doing excellent, and that's how we got to that ballet feeder recital scene, which was wonderful. I mean, even his entire team actually saw the whole thing. And they were impressed. I mean, especially the <laughs> that one uh, football player who has that monster voice. You know, the black guy. And apparently he changes his emotions, too. <laughs> I love that. And uh, therefore, but because um, we get a call from Karen. Um, and I know there's there's been, like, heated arguments uh, between Joe and Peyton. Because, you know, things are not going so well as it seems. Um, especially since they got into a heated, a heated argument after Joe was taking the, his girlfriend out to a local restaurant. And that turned out to be disastrous. Uh, especially if you saw the deleted scene where now we know what, you know, Peyton actually did to her. You know, Tatiana, who was played by Kate Donato. Uh, just just started to outsmart her, um, just like how she outsmarts uh, everyone, including Stella. <laughs> um, and this is why she just <laughs> invades everyone's minds and drives her crazy. So he's basically acting exactly like Sarah, his wife. And we know that uh, speech in the war. <laughs> okay. Um, so yes... After that, um, they weren't speaking to each other for a while. She was in bed, she was sad, and and Joe just made it up by actually singing an Elvis song to cheer her up, and they made it up for it. Um, but fans were going so well until they went to a local restaurant called um, Barking Crab, you know, at, during lunch um, with Joe and Monique, and this is where we begin to reveal the truth about her mother, you know, Sarah, was that it turns out that, well, she wasn't in Africa after all, as she claims. I mean, Karen basically um, offered uh, Peyton to stay with Joe you know, until everything gets all settled with the custodies and all, and before Karen has to begin to take good care of her. And then this is where we get to this one lie, and that's where tragedy hits um, was when we learned that she actually was allergic to nuts when she was having that dessert and looking like she wasn't joking Joe eventually takes uh, her to the hospital rushes by hoping that she'll recover and then Karen came and talking about the custody thinking that you know, Joe's not going to take good care of her so now Karen's going to end up uh, telling him, you know, it's over. So now, after Peyton decided to stay with Karen for a while, I mean, Joe's all along with his dog. They started feeling very lonely. They started looking at all the the playbooks they had. I mean, her backpack and stuff. Uh, I guess I also forgot to mention that there was a scene in, in the movie before this whole thing happened was where he came up with his own playbook, so that means... Half of this area would be his, while half of the other area would be hers, <laughs> clean the bedroom. Yeah, I mean, and of course, he also bedazzles uh, his football, <laughs> just like he bedazzles his suit with a flower stem and all. <laughs> that was cute. Um, so, because already with the, new, the big game coming up, um, getting ready for it, he started to feel very distracted and because now, you know, he just lost his daughter. 
and hoping because Peyton just saw um, him on TV already, you know, losing grief here and his ability, and plus he actually shattered his leg, yeah, injured it, um, that he decided to have someone else uh, take over for this entire team. So he had to rest for a while until he recovers. But now Peyton finally shows up, along with Kieran, so now hoping he'll be able to recover from that and be able to win this particular championship, hoping this will be the best for him. Because I know, I mean, he already had to watch an interview on ESPN Sports Center, you know, already being real cool by the reporter, hoping because of his selfishness and everything that he wasn't so sure if he's going to get his brass ring. But I know he will once he finally um, wins the, the victory team and all, you know, against those the other football team. And there you go. So it was a remarkable surprise for me of uh, seeing this movie, and I really enjoyed it. So, um, I, I thought The Rock really nailed his performance as Joe Keeman. I mean, this is the kind of character you really care for. I mean, he's very likable, even if he has his flaws. Um, his daughter, of course, uh, uh, Peyton, you know, Madison Peters, you know, did a a great job. I mean, playing basically a smart aleck daughter, but she's so she's as spoiled as 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 ever. But she can <laughs> also invade their minds and all, and do what she, she can to to care for Joe and all. Um, uh, and, anyway, as for the rest of the cast, I mean. Yeah, Rosaline Sanchez was incredible as uh, Monique. Uh, she did her own dance scene, especially during the dance recital, um, which I know they showed this in slow motion and joined in with the rest of the girls and and the rest, even some of the guys too. You know, doing their performances. I know uh, The Rock did actually had a stunt double for that, but still. It was also him too uh, performing. That was incredible. And um, the football scenes were excellent too. I mean, it looked like you're actually watching it, even though this is all done on film. I mean, with ESPN Sports Center being on on the the challenge for the interviews and the other and the way ESPN broadcast this um, through the stadiums and all. Uh, uh, Kira Cedric, uh, very funny as Stella, uh, Joe's uh, <laughs> publicity agent. I mean, especially the scene where she basically outsmarts uh, Peyton and all. Uh, Paige Tuco was was good as Karen, the legal guardian for for uh, Peyton. Uh, Hayes McArthur, hilarious. I mean, yes, he even used the quote directly from Peyton. You know, stupid is a meme word. <laughs> uh, Morris Chestnut was great as Travis. Um, and all the rest of the cast, too. I mean, it, this is just hilarious. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there are some silly moments here and there. Um, but it also had a lot of uh, memorable quotes that I could think of. I mean, especially the, the quote that I really enjoy was when Joe <laughs> was talking about Sarah exactly the way Peyton acts, where she's, he says, You think you're right about everything, just like her. And Peyton says, What else? You squinch your nose when you get angry, just like her. Keep it coming. You're always working with me with those big brown eyes. Well, it's really cute, but it doesn't matter because it's just like her. Keep it going. You invade people's minds and it drives everyone crazy. Just like her. Well, you know what? I'm glad I'm just like her because I don't want to be just like you. And she screams and all. <laughs> 
Um, and, and there's other quotes that you could think of, like, you know, when he criticized uh, ballet and all. Um, but most of all, even with the puns and all, it's still a remarkable family film that The Rock has done for Disney. And it's worth watching. Um, you can check it out on Disney Plus, or you can just buy the Blu-ray or DVD, or maybe perhaps both. If you get the combo pack, or just get the regular Blu-ray. Doesn't matter. So I mean, if you love the movie, um, there's even some nice uh, songs included in the movie. Yeah, and even the Elvis song too at the end. You know, "Burning Love" and the entire cast and crew actually had sound. <laughs> That's cool. Or in the end credits. I mean, after the this nice uh, victory ending. Okay. So anyway, that's the game plan, and I give the movie three and a half stars, closer to four. But hey, it's not a masterpiece, but I still think it's a a great movie for for. But it's a good movie, a very good film to watch, I'm, for your entire family, especially your kids even fans of The Rock <laughs> for WWE. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.